top of the morning to you, everyone. Okay, I'm taking names on who's going to get a demerit that's not sitting in their seat. <laughs> Hurry up, Laura. You know, a lot of times we say, this is the day that the Lord has made, and it just rolls right off our, our tongue. And if you really think about this today, this on this day, is the Lord God made for you and for me to honor him. That's what we're made for, to honor the Lord God. Amen, amen, amen. Well, you know, I'm here because I get to read these praise reports. And Bernie's going to pass that basket around. If there's somebody new here that would like to, Bernie, went, did you get it? Um, <laughs> he was told to sit down, he said. <laughs> I wish I had that authority at home. I really wish that would happen. I really, really do. Um, and so if you're new here, there's a tablet. There's a small tablet, and it has a praise report um, note on the top for a praise report. And if you have a, um, a prayer request, that's on the back side. Write them up. We get many, 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 and they are blessed every single Thursday. We meet to um, to, pray, to um, pray for these prayer requests. If it's on your heart, write it down. Okay, so here we go. These are from just last week. Thank you, God, for your love and for your mercies are new every single day. Amen. Another, another scripture to ponder on. Thank you, Lord Jesus. My kids have quit smoking cigarettes. I knew it didn't say anything else, but I couldn't figure it out. Okay, cigarettes is a good, is a good thing to quit. <laughs> um, my Lord God, thank you for allowing me to serve you and t at Slocum Chapel in a way that I can. It's an honor and privilege to be a servant. All praise goes to God. Thank you, Lord, for keeping me safe as I hit a precious little deer. Your mercy endures forever. <laughs> Where, where is that, Dara? Um, thank you, Jesus, for answered prayer for mending relationships with my family. Thank you for not letting me give up when it felt like it was forever. It's all in your timing, and oh, Lord, what perfect timing it is. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and praise your wonderful name. These are the hearts of the people. Father God, I want to thank you. I always seem to, st to stray from you and fall away uh, from you, but you always seem to bring me back to your loving care, to your loving care. And, you know, we have a precious, precious, precious woman that's not feeling too well these days. And Betty Griffin, we want to say we're praying for you, we love you, we continue to pray for you, and I'm going to be calling you this afternoon. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, Felicia, are you passing that basket? Okay. And here comes my girlfriend, Felicia. There you go, sister. Thank you, Mary. Good morning, church. Uh, it's great to see everybody here today and our guests, too. Um, I wanted to share a little something real quick because we have a marvelous speaker today and a 
place is going to rock. I just know it. Um, in Revelation, in Revelation, when God opened up the seventh seal, it said it got quiet in heaven. There wasn't a sound. And it was quiet for like 30 minutes. And I was reading it, and I was, it said silence was the word they used in, the, in that scripture. And there was comments on why people thought he, that the place was quiet. And what came to my spirit was, I think his heart was broken because he had to do what he had to do. And he delayed the time, I believe, because there were still, still people coming out of the tribulation that were saved. And he was giving everybody, I believe, the last second as possible for those that would come. And so I just wanted to share that it was on my heart. So let us just pray today. Father God, I want to pray for every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Chris in his sermon, that our eyes of understanding would be open, that our hearts would be softened to accept the word, Lord. I want to bless every family that's here and every family that's represented here, Father God. I want to pray over the free will offerings, Father. And it's because you give us that we can give back to you and further your kingdom. And I ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Anybody? Oh, Annie. Okay, Sister Ann. I didn't know. It's a long one. Good morning. Little miracles. I believe in all your miracles. The little ones are sometimes the best. I keep track of all those moments that are amazing, I can attest. The parking spot that wasn't there till we drove down that aisle, it wasn't heated. The electric cart that just appeared because you knew that it was needed. The money that I found one day that I swore would never be there. I had a need for it right then and I'd looked everywhere. The apartments that magically opened up, the perfect homes for us to live in, the way the timing fell into place and the finances we were given. That shirt I had been wanting, I found on a thrift store rack. My old one was no longer good, but I couldn't take it back. The time I should have burned the hand, I laid on a hot, hot stove, electric. I did what I knew to do, including praying, and never saw a mark that was specific. Bring on those minor moments, Lord. I will continue to be truly grateful for them all. I praise you and thank you for each and every one, and even for those I may not recall. I cannot stop thanking you enough, Jesus, for the major ones, the in-between, the minuscule. I praise you for all my healings, but at times, I think the littlest ones are oh so cool. So we do have some birthdays this week. Juliana's birthday is the 29th. Felicia's birthday is the 30th. And Donna's birthday is the 2nd. So we're going to get to sing to you guys. A happy birthday to you. A happy birthday to you. Every day of the year, may you feel Jesus near. A happy birthday to you. A happy birthday to you. The best year you ever had. Happy birthday, guys. All righty, on to the announcements. Um, we will be having, um, we would appreciate your cooperation from the AV team um, after service. Wasn't that last week? Okay. Um, we are scheduled to meet at 1 p.m. to go over plans and assist in efforts to upgrade the AV table, so... Just uh, during this time, try not to distract us if you're around. Right, we appreciate it. So our Slocum Chapel schedule for the week. Monday nights, we have the 21 Laws of Leadership class. That's from 6 to 7.30. Tuesday nights, we have youth group. Wednesday nights, we usually have grief share that will be resuming in March. 
And then Thursday nights, we have prayer at 5, and Bible study starts at 6.30. Fridays, you're free. Next week on Saturday, we're going to be having a celebration of life for Mimi. It's going to be at 11 o'clock. Um, and we please ask that nobody wears black. She hated black. So please wear something bright and colorful. That's fine. Thank you. Oh. So next week, we are going to be having a guest speaker at our Sunday service. It's also Communion Sunday and Crock-Pot Sunday. So it'll be a great time of, of fellowship. So make sure you come out. The 21-day Daniel fast is starting today. So you know who you are. I'm sure you have all your information. Mary Noble is your resource if you need any more information. And please make sure you did check with your doctor um, if you have any medical needs before you start that. Be sure to pick up um, a church directory and calendar on the back table. Um, if you need to add any information or additional copies, please see Linda. On Monday, February 19th, we're doing um, a President's Day skate at Skate Away. The tickets are $5 at WRGN. <laughs> Early morning fellowship, we have a men's breakfast in February. Um, Sign-up sheet is going to be going around. It's going to be a Sunday before our AM service. So once we know who's coming, we'll decide on an exact date and time. And then the ladies, we are more put together. We already have a date and time. February 17th at 6 p.m. We also have a sign-up sheet for that. We just want a general head count. Thank you to our Facebook family and friends for tuning in with us every week. Those who join us online, our information is up there. We would love to see you, hear from you in any way. But thank you for your support. That's it for me. Children are dismissed to Sunday school. Got one more, one more thing to say. Actually, this guy has one more thing to say because he had to run up here to mom real quick. Do you want to tell them? Mm -hmm. In you August, too, you too shy? Wayne is going mm -hmm. to be a big brother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yay. Yeah. So we appreciate your love and your prayers through all of this. <laughs> And then children are dismissed to Sunday school, by the way. and everything that's going on here at the chapel. Praise God. Good to see everyone in the house of the Lord. Thank you for our guests being here. Today's uh, a special day. Uh, toward the end of the service, we are going to do a baby dedication. We're going to uh, dedicate Levi David Stevens. Uh, he's um, Lori's and um, Chris's grandson and Michaela and Tim's son. And their grandparents are here also, so we're so happy to do that. Thank you for being here today. And anybody else who's, who's our guest and those watching us by Facebook. Amen. So let me say this to you. So what we're doing is we're taking the stories and the writings of the, of the Bible, and we're studying them, and we're looking into them, and we're looking at people's lives and their characters, and we're looking at how God worked through people's lives that's what we're looking at and we're looking at how God moved in people's lives and I know sometimes we we get up here and we do praise reports and we're going you know that's nice and people are things are happening just like Mimi's uh, um, what do you call it, poem it's the same thing like there's times where God shows up God even gave me a, an instapot <laughs> I asked him for an Instapot, threw it up on Facebook, and God gave me an Instapot. <laughs> he gave me some hearing aids. <laughs> I can hear better. Huh? So throughout, throughout life, we're, we're looking at people's lives and seeing how, how did God move in people's lives. But there's some things that are, that are like biggies. They're like biggies when, when it comes to God and him moving on our behalf. Like how come there were some people 
especially when Jesus walked there that, that got miracles. You know, and if I asked you today to raise your hand, like, how many here, like, need a miracle? You know, we need, we need a miracle. And that, a miracle is something that's miraculous, that, that happens out of our scope of doing something about. There's some things we don't need miracles about. There's some things we just need to, we need to change in our lives. We need to repent sometimes. We need to, them things don't need miracles. I think, Chris, you said it last night on the phone or something. There's some things that we don't have to pray about. If somebody's in dire strait or dire need, we don't have to pray about that. We just need to do something about it. That's, that's, that's not a no-brainer. But when it comes to miracles and signs and wonders and miracles, and then some, some will discredit that too and saying, oh, you know, God doesn't do that today and God isn't, you know, uh, we're saying that God isn't the same or Jesus isn't the same yesterday, today, and forever. Is he or not? Has he changed? So I have two things, like when the Lord was moving in the book of Acts, I have two things that I always said throughout the years. It was either a dispensation of time, meaning that it was time for God to move. Because I think Ray, if I remember right, Ray said last, last week, it's in his time. And that's right, because he, he, uh, he, he comes and goes and takes people and, and, and people are born. And so that's his timing. But, there, but these things are, when the Holy Spirit came on the men of God and, and the women of God, things started to happen. God, God was moving in their midst. And I think, I think that had to do with their dedication to the Lord. Just like right now, if I would ask you, what do you how do you see the world today? Not that it was any different than the other days, but we would say the world's pretty much upside down, kind of, in a lot of ways. There's a lot of confusion, there's a lot of um, controversy, and there's a lot of challenges, and, and there's things that you look at, and they, and they just don't make sense. You're thinking, why would they make decisions like this? These are, these are not good decisions. You ever see that about your kids? They make a decision, and you're going, that's a bad decision. Amen. And we're making decisions. All this stuff's going on in our lives, and so, and so the only thing we can do is pray and believe, right? And pray and believe. So let me get into this a little bit. I want to start off by reading out of Hebrews uh, chapter 2, the book of Hebrews chapter 2, and I'm going to start reading at, I believe, verse 1 to 4. Now, now it's okay. He, I want to leave that one up there, Sal. Leave that one up there. But I want to, I want to start from so we get a little idea of why this was said at the time it was said. So Hebrews chapter 2. And I'm going to start in verse 1 down to 4. Therefore we must give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest we drift away. You know, we need to stay, we give, give heed. In other words, pay attention to the things we have heard, we have heard, and, 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 and at least we drift away. Like, we've heard things. We heard this morning, we, we, we sang a song about the blood of Jesus, right? We heard about the blood of Jesus. There's something about the blood of Jesus. There's something about the blood of Jesus. It's not magic. It's power. There's power in the blood of Jesus. It doesn't make sense to us, but there's power in the blood. And that's how they came up with that song. There's power in the blood. I've been washed in the blood. There's something about the blood. So don't, don't forget about those things. For if the word spoken through angels proved steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just reward, every transgression and every disobedience received a just reward. In other words, he's saying, like, when, when we do certain things, there's going to be a just reward for it. Like, God is a just God. He's going to have his way. God's going to have his way. And then, how, how shall we escape, verse 3, if we neglect such a great salvation, which at first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed through us by those who heard him? So here are these people that were in their sin throughout the whole Old Testament, and they tried to rid themselves of their sin by their sacrifices and the, and the shed blood of animals. And then all of a sudden, Jesus comes along, and John says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. 
Jesus, he is the last sacrifice. There's not going to be any more sacrifice. It was the blood of Jesus. It was the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus only works in my life if I apply the blood into my life. You're going to see as we go. And then verse 4 is the one that's up on the screen here. Verse 4. I love that little background there. It says, God also bearing witness both with signs and wonders and miracles. Witness to what? Witness to Jesus broke the curse over mankind with signs, wonders, and miracles. A lot of us in here, including myself at times, we're struggling with things that are not from God. There are things that are happening to us that, that, are, that are heavy. We can't deal with them. They're heavy. We need to turn to God and have God something. So he says, God also bearing witness both with signs, wonders, with various, with, uh, various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit, Spirit according to his will. Okay, so God, God had to, and, and you'll hear this there. So the, the title of the message here is, Why Signs, Wonders, and Miracles? Why do we need signs, wonders, and miracles. We're going to walk by faith. We're not going to walk by sight, right? We're going to not walk by what's happening to us. I can only, I can only bring up a barb uh, in, uh, at this time, but I could bring up any one of you guys that are dealing with something. But, but what's, we, we could walk by sight and say, oh, man, you know, and, and you know, go to the doctors, and the doctors are, are saying this and saying that. Man, we need to believe in a miracle. We need, to, we need to believe in a sign and a wonder. We need to keep pressing on. Not some crazy idea, but I'm talking about trusting God and pressing in toward God. Part of, part of my fast for these next 21 days, my fast is number one on the list is Barb's healing. I'm going to get as close as I can to the Lord by fasting, by denying myself, and Barb's healing is one of them. And the second one is going to be for whatever vision we have here, including the land, that that's going to come to fruition. I'm going to ask God. I'm going to get as close as I can to God and ask him to let that be fulfilled. And then the, the last one is to see the body of Christ grow and become what it was called to be. Amen? Is that fair? Three pointed prayers that I'm going to diligently pray about, and I hope you pray around. So signs, wonders, and miracles are proof to the believers, I'm sorry, it's proof, actually, yes, to the believers, but it's also proof to the unbelievers that the Lord is real, that the Lord is real. So that's why it's really important that we pray for people, that we pray for people and give God an opportunity, because when we're praying, we're inviting God, we're saying, God, could you get involved in what's happening here, because we have no control over it. We've been to the doctors, we've done this, and we've done that. We are terminal, and we have no control. God, I'm inviting you. We are inviting you. Would you be involved in this process? And when God gets involved in that process, that's what we call a sign, a wonder, and a miracle. Amen. So Peter and John, they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and it was evident that, the, that they spent lots of time with Jesus. It was evident. Remember, they recognized that they were with Jesus because why? They spent lots of time with Jesus. They started looking like Jesus. I'm going to challenge us today. What do we spend a lot of time doing? You know, not that there's nothing wrong with enjoying your life and going hiking or whatever you do. It, there's nothing wrong with that. But what, how, do we, how much time do we spend with Jesus? How much time do we spend in the mechanics of the ministry or in the mechanics of life? How much time do we spend doing nothing, idle nothing? We're actually, we say, wasting our time. But these didn't waste their time. They spent time with Jesus. They were with Jesus. And it was evident, listen to this, it was evident that they were with Jesus. That's why in the mechanics of the ministry or the mechanics of your life, when that becomes more important than your relationship with Jesus, we are missing it. Even the mechanics of the ministry, oh, everything's great and we're doing all these wonderful things. When, we, when that becomes our focus point, and we know it becomes our focus point, when we start complaining about it and we start whining about it, 
then that becomes our focus point, and we're getting our, our eyes off of Jesus. Amen. You know, when we say amen, we're saying so be it. Okay, that's what that means, so be it. Amen. Now, now when they saw in Acts 4, 13 and 14, that should be up on the screen, Acts 4, 13 and 14, now when they saw the boldness of Peter, when they saw the boldness of Peter, the, the boldness of Peter, when they saw the boldness of Peter, when they saw the boldness, they saw that Peter was willing to take a risk and act with courage and confidence. When they said we saw the boldness, they knew that Peter was going to act in boldness and in confidence, but he was also willing to take a risk. When we're praying for somebody that's ill or has a terminal illness or they have any kind of situation in their life and you're praying for them, I want to tell you right now, that is risky. Because you're asking God to do something on their behalf, right? It's risky because you're thinking, I want something to happen. I want, I want God to intervene here. I want something to happen. So it's risky. But, but you have to have that holy boldness to where just trusting and believing that God is who he says he is and he's able to do what he says he can do. Amen. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they were both bold and perceived that they, that they were uneducated. Who are these guys? Who are they? They're uneducated. They're not schooled. They saw that they were, they were uneducated and they were, and they were untrained. <laughs> you know what? They didn't have to be educated and trained. They didn't have to. They had the Holy Spirit of God working through them. Something was, these were ordinary men that God was working through. I don't know about you, but I don't want to go through the motions of religion and play in church I want the God to work through me to minister to the people. And, they, and, and, and he said they were untrained men, and they marveled. You know what that means, marveled? They admired them. They said, wow, like God is working through these ordinary men that are uneducated and untrained. God can work through you. God, I don't care. It doesn't matter if you have a second Great education. And if you're not trained, the Holy Spirit will train and he'll move through your life. And you hear me say this over and over. Don't disqualify yourself because you're not a professional clergy person. It's not about being a professional clergy person. It's not about having a, 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 a doctrine or a, or, 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 a, or a certificate that you're a reverend. It's not about that. It's about being filled with the Holy Ghost. It's about being close to Jesus. They admired them. And whenever, whenever something like this happens through you, you will be admired by people and will, they will marvel and they'll realize that you have been with Jesus. That's key. That's key. I don't know about you, and I'll be honest with you. Sometimes you say, oh, man, you're a minister, and you, you know, you're in this all the time, and you, you must be really close to Jesus. Not. I'm distracted just like you are of the world. I'm distracted uh, just like you are of the, of the, the condition of the, of the world. I'm distracted just like you are of the condition of my family. So I struggle, but, but, but you, you're the one who's going to decide how close you want to get to Jesus and how close you are to Jesus. It's not Jesus plus something else. I'll tell you what, it really runs, rubs me the wrong way when the mechanics of the ministry becomes more important than getting right with Jesus and staying right with Jesus or the ministry of Jesus. It rubs me the wrong way, and I know it rubs God the wrong way too. Because he said it over again, the building and all the, all the stained glass windows and all that becomes more important than, 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 than having that relationship with Jesus. You'll see as we go. And they marveled that they had been with Jesus. Verse 14, and seeing the man who had been healed. Remember last week I talked about the crippled man. This was key. They saw the man that was healed. They saw something happening. I don't know about you, but when I pray for somebody, I want to see something happen. I don't want to just pray my prayers up in the air and it's God's not hearing me. 
You know, Jesus, the Bible says that every time Jesus prayed, he said, I know God hears me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on now. Come on. Hallelujah. The man who had been healed, standing with them, they could say nothing against it. They had the same boldness of Jesus, and it was evident. Oh, to be like Jesus, to have the evidence in your life, to have the evidence of living a, a, a set-apart life, to, for that to be evident. And you, know, and you know, by the things that you say and the things that I say and the way you connect, your, uh, um, not connect your life, but conduct your life is evidence enough for people to look at you and say, they couldn't say you know Jesus. The way you act and the way you say, I'll tell you what, I'm not, I'm not on Facebook anymore, but every once in a while I go to the, the, the channel of my, my area. I hear people that I know on Facebook running their mouth about something you don't even know what they're talking about. And it's nonsensical. I mean, anybody looking at it is going, what are they talking about? Who are they talking about? It's crazy. And so, and so, you know, your life will show if you've been with Jesus. Your life will, your life will, will, will reflect the life of Jesus. Anybody could say they're a Christian. Anybody could say they're a Baptist. Anybody could say they're a Catholic. Anybody can say they're this and they're that. <laughs> I, I, got, I was raised Catholic. I, you know, the thing about me with Catholic, it's funny if you go, I'm Catholic. I said, yeah. When was the last time you're church? Oh, well, I haven't been to church. I, that's a holy day of obligation. You're not Catholic. Get out of here. You're entitled only. That's all you are. Well, I was raised Catholic. My mother was Catholic. You're not Catholic. Catholics have a hell of a day of obligation Sunday, and they worship. And that goes for any of the other denominations that say they're something, but what are they? We say we're Pentecostal, meaning that we believe in the gifts and the power of the Holy Spirit. We believe that. They saw the boldness of Jesus, and boldness of Jesus was, was evident. It wasn't self-confidence that, that, that they, that, that, what their words was. It was their actions. They were in sync with those who knew God. They were in sync with, with knowing God. They, they, they strictly, the authorities, they strictly forbid them to not to speak or teach in the name of Jesus. Why? They were afraid because it was going to spread around that what they did to Jesus, that they killed Jesus. They were afraid. They were afraid of being stoned because of what they did to Jesus, so they were afraid to talk about that. The devil and the Antichrist spirit does not want things to get better or for people to get better because if, it, if they did, their teaching would become exposed. The devil, you know, the Antichrist is already on the scene, right? The Antichrist is already, and, that, and, and when I say Antichrist, it, it's anti whatever God stands for. Whatever God stands for, and anybody's against that, that's anti. And, 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 and the, the devil does not want to be exposed. He doesn't want to be exposed because he will lose ground, he will lose people. And Jesus made a, specul a, 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 a speculative of him. J Jesus put it right out there when he, when he destroyed the devil. He destroyed the works of the devil when he went to the cross. We sang it this morning. Beautiful. It was all about the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. So Peter said, so, so they continued. Uh, to severely threaten them. You guys better not speak in that name. You better not be, you know, you better not be spreading this stuff. No, they probably told him, don't be going to heal nobody. Don't be healing people. You know, let him stay sick. Let him stay busted and disgusted. Don't, don't, don't do that. And Peter said, whatever is right before God is what we're going to do. This is key. And speak. Because he's Lord. You see the boldness? 
You see the both people are afraid today and saying, ah, you know, I really don't want to talk about the abortion issue because that's a big issue. You know, I mean, and people have their own opinions. So, man, that is totally opposed to God killing unborn babies. Come on now. Come on. Come on. It's not right. It's wrong before God. Nobody's going to convince me that it's right before God. I don't care if you make a law about it or anything. It's not right before God to kill the unborn or to kill anybody for that matter. Not the world system. The early, the early church's message was simple. They preached and taught Jesus. The early church was simple. They preached and they taught Jesus, him alone, Jesus, the life of Jesus. And then in Acts 5, 42, and daily in the temple and in every home, they did not cease, to cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. And I tell you, brothers and sisters, that has not changed. Don't get religious with people. But it's, it's about Jesus. He's the Prince of Peace. He's the Mighty God. He's the Everlasting Father. He's the one that the government is going to be upon His shoulders, and His kingdom will have no end. And His kingdom has to come through you as a vessel. Every morning I would get up and pray, God, use me as a vessel. Use me as a vessel. Let me, let me confront the enemy. Let me confront the enemy today, God, in Jesus' name. Help me. Give me the power I need. And in Acts 5.42, and daily in the temple, the church, the temple is a church, and in every house they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as a Christ. And we shouldn't either. The question is, how do we do that? How do we do that? We do it, a couple of reasons, is by signs, wonders, and miracles. We do it by your testimony, like I was once this way, and now I'm this way. God changed me, and God's changing me. It's by the word of their testimony and the blood of the Lamb. That's how you do it. You know, Chris and I were talking the other day, and we were talking about the church and, you know, how old most of you people got here and all that stuff. Most of you people, if not all you people that are in here today, you got here because somebody spoke to you about that something was happening down here, that the Spirit of God might have been here, or that it was a good church, or it was a, a historical, or whatever, but somebody told you about this place. Somebody spoke it, or you heard it, and that's how you got here. You didn't get here by some gadget or sending you cards and letters in the mail or something. You didn't get here, but you got here because somebody told you, and we, as disciples of Christ, we should be telling people about getting right with Jesus. And you hear me say this over and over again, not about joining the church, but about getting right with Jesus. Because, you know, the people who are not at their time of death, which we're all going to die, it's so much easier to celebrate, like we're doing next Saturday, celebrating Mimi's life, to celebrate her life. She's, she's with the Lord today. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. We don't understand all that, but she is with the Lord today. And we can rejoice and we don't have to, oh man, I wonder if she made it in. By in-depth, here's another way, by signs, miracles, and wonders, by in-depth Bible studies, by teaching and training, but most of all, by, by, by having the Holy Spirit, by being filled with the Holy Spirit. Their message was not, it was not complicated or denominational. It wasn't denominational. The emphasis wasn't on the denomination. I'm um, Catholic, Baptist, Met Methodist, Presbyterian, uh, Jehovah Witness, you name it. It's not about the denomination. It, it's not about that. That wasn't the emphasis. The emphasis was on Jesus, right? That's why they were called Christians. They were followers of Christ. It was not composed of, of logical theories or theologies. It, 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 they, they, didn't teach, they did not teach the, the letter of the law, which kills. They, 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 uh, they maintained the spirit of the word, which gave life. It's the spirit of the word that gives life. That's why we say faith cometh by hearing and hearing by God's word. When we hear the word of God, it gives us the faith. 
It's by the, the hearing of the word. It's by the word that gives life. 2 Corinthians 3, 1 to 6. Do we begin again to commend ourselves? And when he said that, do we begin again to commend ourselves? He meant, do we praise ourselves? Do we commend ourselves? Or do we need, as one other's epistle of con, uh, commendation, two or letters of commendation for you? You are our epistle. We do not need long letters about us. The epistle is long. We don't need long letters about us. We don't need our, our faces up on the billboards and our, the name of our church up on the bill, billboards with our pictures or anything like that. We don't need the ministry or a name on the ministry. When somebody says, it's this, this ministry, no, it's not your ministry. It's the ministry of Jesus. It's Jesus' church. It's his church. He said, I'll build my church and the gates of hell. It's not my church. We're the body of Christ. We're going to get into this in two weeks. We're the body of Christ, and you're a member of that body, just like your body parts in your body are members of one to another. I don't know. Did anybody's arm argue with it, I, it, with it this morning to get out of bed? Did your arm go, no, I'm not going. I'm staying home today. No, your arm fit right in with your body because your body said, no, we're going. Your mind says, you're going. Once again, how many of you woke up this morning? Oh, man, I worked all week because I don't feel like going to church. <laughs> it's life that tells the story, not the letter. It, it's, it's your life that tells the story, not what's written about you. You are our epistles, he said in verse 2. Your epistles written in the hearts, knowing and read by all men. You are being watched. You are being, you are being read. Your life is being read. What you say and what I do is being read. By men. How many have a hard time when somebody says something nice about you and you have a hard time receiving it? Uh, you know, because you think to yourself, man, they don't know me. <laughs> they might say something nice about me. I'm all dressed up. I'm looking good, you know, handsome, you know, or whatever. But they don't know. They don't know. You know, you have to ask my wife. Your life, te your, 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 your testimony tells the story of Christ ministered by us, written not with not with uh, not with uh, with with hands with or with ink, but by the Spirit of the Living God. Not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of flesh. That is of the heart. What you and I say and do really makes a difference. Jesus was active in daily life. He wasn't contained in small religious closets, marked with open on Sunday. Jesus was in the marketplace. Jesus was in the places where you and I go on a daily basis. That's where Jesus was. He spent some time in, a, in the temple, but he spent time in the temple teaching them to do what he was doing, to go into the marketplace and speak to people. You, I have a sphere of influence. You have a, I have a sphere of influence in your life, a, a sphere of influence that I don't have, but you do have it. You guys, you truckers, you guys that are truckers, when I was on the road, I had a sphere of influence when I was on the road. We met, we met led guys to the, to the Lord on the road. Matter of fact, Chris got led to the Lord in the parking lot at the truck stop. You know, you're, you're, you have a sphere of influence, but you need to be in the Holy Spirit to be able to influence somebody else to turn them toward God. It's not contained in, in small closets, marked would open on Sunday only. They re represent him as the mighty healer. We represent Jesus as the mighty healer. You know, you tell somebody, this is risky. You know, my God is a healing God. Can I pray for you? Barb and I anymore, we carry oil with us all the time. Can I lay hands on you and, and anoint you with oil? My God's a healer. Matter of fact, especially when God is prompting you, you ever have God prompt you, maybe not to pray or heal somebody or to ask for healing, but to just talk to him, and, you, and, you're, and, you're, and you're resisting? I'm not talking about somebody you know. I'm talking about maybe somebody you don't know. They represented, they represent him as the only Savior and the only baptizer in the Holy Spirit, Jesus. They constantly and, con and consistently exalted him in their preaching and their teaching. And their ministry was a ministry 
of inspiration. They inspired people. Come on, man. We can do this. Come on. In Jesus' name, we, this is going to happen. Come on. Don't get negative on me. Don't, don't get down in the dumps. You know, come on. Let me encourage you and help you through this. Their, min, their ministry was inspirational as well as, as um, um, instructive. Many today, many, many today um, destroy faith. Rather than, oh, yeah, you know, you faith guys, you always believe God can do things. And, you know, I don't know, man. I don't know if I believe that or not. You know, they destroy faith. No, man, if we don't have faith, what do we have? Rather than strengthen it. Their emphasis, the, the emphasis is, the continual emphasis is on signs, wonders, and miracles, and encouraging people or the leadership for God's purpose. God's purpose, this is God's purpose, and it's key. God's purpose and desire for the church today is that it might make a tremendous impact. Listen to this. God's purpose and desire today that it would make a tremendous impact not only on the believers, but also on the non-believers. That's God's purpose. If you're meddling in something else, you're meddling in the wrong things. We need, we need his miracles, his power to restore the church, not another religious gathering. And our minds and spirits are open to, to the move of the Spirit, and that only then can the Lord accomplish his purpose in us. When he's moving by his Spirit, but how are you going to know if you never practice? Remember last week I talked about practice? Oh, is that good? The challenge before us, here's the challenge. The challenge before us today is e even though we have, we have come to re remarkable progress in, our me in medical science and, and recent years, the amount of uh, um, sickness in the world remains extremely high. Amen. I mean, everybody you talk to, there's something going wrong with them. There's something, they're sick with something. Even though we have skilled doctors and Christian doctors and medical people in the medical field, uh, getting well is still a challenge. So because it's a challenge, I think more so than ever before, we need to get the power. We need to have the right we need to have the right medicine. We need to have the right vitamins. We need to have the right nourishment so that we can distribute this power, right? When I go to doctors, don't them doctors, they're in there, oh, man, let's, what are we going to do? Let's figure it out. Let's find out what's wrong with this guy. How can we get him healed? I mean, us as a church, okay, how can, we, how can we pray and believe God for this person and for their healing? How can we do it? He's commissioned. Christ has, Christ has the, cha the ministers must also face the challenge that Christ has commissioned his servants to preach the gospel and heal the sick in their spirit, souls, and bodies. The gospel is the good news of deliverance and healing in, in the name of Jesus. The gospel is the good news of deliverance and healing in the name of Jesus. Deliverance and healing for the total person. There should be, this should be the, the mission and goal of every church. Remember the scripture, in, inside the scripture, Jesus said, I didn't come from those that are well, I came from the, for those that are sick. The church is a hospital for sick people. Remember I said you, a couple months ago, we're just a bunch of sick individuals. This should be every church's goal. Our preaching and teaching, should, I'm almost done here, bring healing to the people to their spirit, their souls, and their body, and there should be evidence of that healing in our midst. How, how do we bring healing? How, is, how, how, does, how does healing happen? I'm glad you asked. Number one, you preach the word in season and out of season. In other words, you preach the word, and when I say preach, you're not standing on a corner with a microphone. It means proclaiming the word. It means the word preach means to proclaim the word, to proclaim, proclaim the testimony. 2 Timothy 4, 2, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. When you feel like it, when you don't feel like it. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering of teaching. Psalms 107, 20, it's up there on the board. He, he, he sent his word 
and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. How happy would you be? How satisfied would you be if you had somebody come to you and say, Chris, only because you're sitting up front, Chris, I'm picking on you. Chris, I got this thing going on with me. And Chris goes, okay, I know somebody who can help you. His name is Jesus, and I'm going to pray. In the name of Jesus, in the power and authority of Jesus, whatever this is that this person is coming, going through, I command it to leave in the power and demonstration of the Holy Spirit, be gone. And all of a sudden, a person goes, wow, it's gone. I got healed. Just like that young man we started out with. It was, he was crippled from birth. He was praising God and jumping and leaping and praising God. Why? Because he was healed. He was better. Man, if I got better, I'm going I'm to shout it out, right? How many people you know that are sick? People need to get better. People, need to, people are sick physically, mentally, emotionally, psychologically. The second one is teach the people. We need to teach on healing, teach on forgiveness, teach on having a right attitude and a right relationship. Give, att- give, attention, in, 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 uh, about, give attention to harmony in the home and, 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 and a biblical structure to the family. Educate people in the right way, thinking and, and believing. Teach the fruits of the Spirit. Encourage, encourage the laying on of hands in prayer. Encourage the laying on of hands in prayers. Encourage it. I encourage you. I challenge you. Ask permission for prayer. Can I lay a hand, my hands on you and pray? You're sitting in here today. Some of you are going, man, pray? Me pray? <laughs> yeah, you pray. How is the gospel ever going to get proclaimed around the world if people don't take it around the world? He didn't tell them to stay. He told them to go into all the world and preach and teach and make disciples. Encourage the laying on of hands in prayer. Teach people the healing that comes from, comes from participating in the Lord's Supper. When we do communion, right, we do communion once a month here, there's a healing in that. It's healing because we're being reminded of the blood of Christ. The body and the blood, the broken body. The program of the church should be, should be to release the captive. Recovery sight to the blind and recovery and deliverance to the oppressed. Let this kind of ministry function in the church to glorify God. So Lord, the Lord is lifted up. So Jesus is lifted. Not a man, not a ministry, not a church, not a denomination, but a man. By the name of Jesus, that Jesus be lifted up. May he grant us. In this church and in the churches in the surrounding areas, signs, wonders, and miracles. Amen. So we're going to have a baby dedication here in a minute. But before I close this part of the service, here's, here's a decision that I have to make in my life as I drive, as I travel through life. I got to make a decision whether is Jesus Lord or isn't he Lord? Is he Lord in my life? Did Jesus go to the cross and die for me and give his life for me and pay the penalty for my sin. Did Jesus really did that, do that? If Jesus really did that, and I believe that Jesus did that, it's something that I have to accept myself. I got to say, yes, Lord Jesus, I know that I was born in sin and I was shaped in iniquity. Lord, I know, I know that I'm lost and I need to be found. I know, I know, Lord, that I'm blind but I need to see, Lord. Lord, help me. And you know, I sat in a service like this. You probably heard me say this before. I sat in a service like this, and I was sitting there, and I heard the preacher say something like that in that order. And I'm sitting there, I'm saying, you know what, I'm lost. You know, if I died right now, I'm not sure if I'm going to heaven. I'm not sure if I'm going to heaven. I never asked Jesus to be Lord of my life or to come into my life. I never asked that. The thing we're doing today with with Levi, we're dedicating Levi to Jesus today. We're going to thank the Lord for bringing Levi as a gift to this family. And it's going to be the parents and the grandparents and the family. They're going to help Levi to learn and to know about God and about creation, where he came from. I want to say this. Chris and I were talking last week, and I said, 
just think about this. Before, how old were you when you started to realize that you were alive on earth? You were two, three, four. I don't know how old I was, but I remember my mother, instead of giving me milk in my bottle, she gave me chocolate milk. And boom, I came alive. Whoa, what's this? Did you get some chocolate milk too, Levi? No. But I remember, whoa, I, 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 I'm, I'm alive. I'm something, what's this? I was like, what's this? Where was I before? You know? You, know, you, you had the awareness of, of, your, of, your life, of you being alive. And then you go through all your whole life. But, but it's when we get to this part of our life, like, I need to come to Jesus and say, Jesus, I've been born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Matter of fact, some churches, they want to baptize baby to wash away their sins. Water does not wash away your sins. That's more of a dedication. It's not washing away sins. There's no place in the Bible. I should say, I shouldn't say it. There's one place where it talks about uh, washing away your sins. But there's no other place in the Bible. It's, always, it's only by the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So I stand there before God and I say, God, I just need to ask you to come into my life because you shed your blood for me. And I, I accept you, Jesus, as the Lord of my life. I ask you, Lord, today, just come into my life and be Lord of my life. And I remember doing that and my life changed and I grew up in a religious home. I knew a lot about God, but I really didn't know Jesus. And that goes the same way to people watching us by Facebook or, or YouTube. If you don't know Jesus, get to know Jesus. So I'm, I'm giving what we call an altar call. <laughs> if you're in here today and you're sitting here and you know that you don't know Jesus and you, you might have been religious or anything else, and you know you know, don't know Jesus, and, and you would think if you would die today, you probably were going to wind up in hell. You're going to probably wind up eternally separated from God. But when you think about Jesus and the blood that he shed for us, that's not the case. But you have to accept that payment that he did for you personally. Before we dedicate Levi, does anybody here want to pray with us and ask Jesus to come into their life and be Lord of their life? If you're here today and you haven't did that or if you're watching this by Facebook or YouTube, if you want to ask Jesus to come into your life, anybody here like that? Praise God. Amen. All right. The only thing we could do is invite. That's it. Amen. So, baby dedication. Everybody does it differently, and I do too. And I want to charge, uh, when we talk about um, baby dedication, we're talking about a charge to the church. Um, Michaela and Tim, they live quite a, quite a bit away from here, but I would encourage them, I would love them to be coming up here. It's a long trip for them to come every Sunday. Encourage them to get into a local church because the church does have a, a responsibility to help them growing up their child. So this is going to be the charge to the church, the charge uh, to the congregation. The scripture reminds us that children are a heritage from the Lord. God entrusts them to us to raise in the fear of God and in his service. And you could answer by saying, we do. Does the congregation commit to helping Long with his parents and his grandparents to raise Levi in the fear and admiration of the Lord? We do. We do. Okay, amen. Have the parents come up here, Tim and Michaela. I'll grab the parent grandparents here in a minute. Um, if you guys just stand here, Tim, come over here, face, face in me. Just like we're doing your wedding again. Yeah. yeah. Okay. As parents, we must be vigilant at our earliest childhood to stress the importance of God's presence in our lives. It's not going to happen by accident. Levi, the only understanding he's going to, understand like where he came from or where he's going is going to be by you guys or somebody else is going to teach him something else so if you're raising him in the lord you're going to have to teach him that uh, where he came from you know the, the story of creation when he goes to school if he goes to a public school he's going to learn the um, theory of evolution mm -hmm. and don't forget it's just a theory mm -hmm. 
But uh, if you teach him creation, where he came from, that he made an image and likeness of God throughout his life, you're going to have a lot of time to do that. So as a parent, it's not going to happen by accident. It's going to happen by you guys, just like helping him walk and eat and all that other stuff, yeah. This must be done not only by our words, but by our actions. Parents must model their Christian's lives before their family. Children learn what they live. They watch you. And I want to just tell you two, you two guys, think about your childhood and think about the stuff that happened to you along the way and your parents and all that stuff that was involved. Uh, you know, whatever happened to them, good and bad. Uh, you learn from all of that. That was part of your life. So they're going to they're gonna learn to the way you live your life. So what we like to do is we like to um, present a red rose. Where are the roses? Ah. You want to bring it up, Rob? Feel up to it? Come here. Okay, so the red rose uh, represents the blood of Jesus. It is the blood of Jesus was shed for Levi to restore his relationship with God. Um, I'm going to give you an envelope. It's in the bag. I'm going to give you an envelope that's sealed. When Levi gets about 12 years old or something, I'm going to have the um, plan of salvation in there for him. I don't want to tell you everything that's in there, but have him open up and try to explain it to him. Of course, by then he'll have a good understanding of what he needs to do as far as salvation goes. So the red rose re represents the blood of Jesus to restore a relationship, but likewise, we must conduct our own lives to be example of this before him. Example of what? It is to be godly parents. It is your responsibility as parents to seek the Lord. So the, the red rose is just going to be to remind you of the shed blood of Jesus. Now, for the right ro white rose, I want to use this white rose in two ways. The white rose represents purity. As the parents of Levi, it is your responsibility to instruct him in the value of living a pure life before God and man. Your duty to maintain purity within your own life and within your own home an example of purity of Christ. You know, when I say purity, I'm talking about there's certain things you're going to have to guard against. You're going to have to guard him against, whether it's social media or TV or movies. We were going to take our grandkids to the movies one time, and we really never did too much of a review on this movie. And here it had a lot of things in there that we did not want our kids to, to view. And the rest of the movie wasn't too bad, but we never went to it. My son reminded us, he said, Dad, did you do the reviews on that movie? There's stuff in there I don't want my kids to see. And so, stuff like that, the, the Lord challenges us to live without sin and above reproach. Your children will follow what you are more than what you say. Maintain purity in your children will grasp the unholy nature of, of sin and choose to forsake it. Your children will refuse to forsake it. The second part of this white rose, this would represent Levi's life, and you see it's it doesn't look like those roses, them roses are, are already blooming and stuff like that. But, but this white rose, the bud, ha represents not yet what's going to be revealed in his life. In other words, God has a plan and a purpose for his life, and we don't know what that is yet. But it's, there's going to be something. He's going he's to become something and be something, and, but that's not yet revealed. Uh, its loveliness and its potential is still locked up within it and tightly in its tightly closed petals. With time, the rose within will be revealed. The rose within will be revealed. At time, as you watch your son grow, you're going to start to see the, his, his life being, um, you know, coming out. Unlike the rose, his future will be directly influenced by you. You are called upon to help this delicate little life unfold in a way that is pleasing to God and to man. Here's another thing, just a tidbit. Uh, say Levi is not really a person that wants to go to school and be educated that way, but there's something God has for him that he's going to be really good at, right, Levi? So if he doesn't have, like, a lot of school smarts, he can't. he's having a hard time being educated, there's a lot of other things that, that God has a plan for him. The grandparents, would you please come up? The grandparents and the grandmothers. The grandparents, grandfather.
There you go. There you go, Tim. So to grandparents, so as the grandparents, you are also a role, uh, play a role in the life of Levi. You know, a lot of times some religions have, um, they have uh, godparents and godmother and godfathers, and that's for the reason of in case something happens to these two, that the grandparent or the uh, godparents would take over and still raise the child in the Lord. So that's what that's all about. Um, we must include him in our daily prayers, which I know you guys do. It's important to him that you assist their parents in the calling to raise a godly child. You know, it's funny. I got to tell. I got to share this real quick. It's funny. So my my grandson, they live upstairs from us. He's eight years old, nine years old, and they set a mouse trap. And this mouse mouse trap, the mouse got caught in just his foot, and the mouse came out of the cabinet and it was sitting on the floor. And he looked at his mother. He says, "Hey, man, we better call grandpa." <laughs> you know. So grandparents play such a role. Uh, grandparents are, um, we're creating memories. That's really what we're doing. We want our grandkids to look back at us and say, oh, man, I was at Graham's. Graham made delicious food and took us places and just treated us. She let us have candy when we weren't supposed to, <laughs> things like that. So, well, remember that the children are entrusted to them by God. We still have to challenge as grandparents to uh, be an asset to, uh, to this effort in raising them. After all, our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren are our legacies. So just like in marriage, I wanna, I'd like to do a, a, mar a, a vow with you uh, for, for your son. Uh, just, uh, so d you'll, d your response will be, I do, I do, and we will, okay? okay? I do, I do, and we will. So Tim and Mikhail, do you today recognize that Levi was entrusted to you by God and that he is a blessing and a gift to you from God? I do. We do. Do you dedicate Le Levi to the Lord who gave him to you, surrendering all worldly claim upon his life and the hope that he will belong wholly to God? I do. We do. Do you pledge as his parents that with God's fatherly help you will bring him up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord and make every reasonable effort with practice and love, build the word of God and character of Christ and the joy of the Lord into his life? We will. We will. All right. Do you promise to provide through God's blessing for the physical, emotional, intellectual, and spiritual needs of him, looking to your own Heavenly Father for the wisdom and love and strength to serve him and not to use him for your own personal need? We do. We do. do you promise with the help of God to make it your regular prayers that by God's grace he will become and trust Jesus Christ alone for the forgiveness of his sins and for the fulfillment of all his promises to him? even eternal life, and in faith following Jesus as Lord and following and obey his teachings, we will. We will. Amen. We're going to do a prayer of anointing with oil and a prayer of dedication for Levi. Barb, you want to come down and pray with me? Barb? I got the oil right here. Hi, Levi. Can I hold you? Can I hold you, buddy? Come here, Levi. <laughs> Hi, buddy. Come here. Let me see Levi. How you doing, Levi? Come on, Barb. God, and he has a lots of hidden talents that haven't been revealed yet. But Father God, through the upcoming years, I just pray in Jesus' name that Jim and Michaela 
people to look at those traits and foster them and grow them because they're seeds that you want. Yeah. Yeah. I can. Okay. Dear Lord, I just, I want to pray over Levi. This, this, this world is corrupt. It's broken. There's things that you're going to grow up and see that we didn't see when we were younger. The wickedness, the evil that's growing amongst us. And I pray that Mikhail and Tim... We're going to teach him and raise him well. Despite the mistakes his parents made and grandparents and generations before, God helped them to break all generational curses. Amen. All the, all the failures that we were raised with. Hallelujah. The brokenness. The things we've seen we should have never seen. May he not see these things. May his eyes be kept holy. May you be raised up under God's roof with good parents. Amen. That no matter what comes, they fight to stay together and keep this family united. We all have problems. We all have crutches to carry. we got to pick up our cross daily, Lord. And I pray that Mikhail and Timmy will be the parents this little guy needs. He's going to have to fight. He's going to have to fight harder than we had to fight even growing up because of the darkness that surrounds us. So I just ask you, God, to bless this family, bless this little boy, that you will use him one day. Someday. He'll be great for you, God. Amen. He will do great things in your name. And I pray this on the family's name. Amen. 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 Lori, you all right? Amen. Come on, parents, grandparents. I want to pray for Levi. Her name is Kayla. That we just look towards God for your answers. When times get tough, and they will, go to God first, not the world. And I pray for Levi's health, and that he grows up strong and healthy, and I know loving. In your name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Parents, grandparents, anyone say anything? Everybody good? Okay. Amen. So... Wait a this is the best baby you ever dedicated. Yeah, <laughs> he didn't act up. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So before we close, I want to just do two more things, and then we have a closing song. I want to do two more things. Uh, the one is, does anybody need prayer here? Let's start to exercise what we preached. And then the second thing, I'd like to pass the mic around. What did you hear the Spirit of God saying to you today through the Word of God? Not through what I said, but what? the word of God was saying concerning the life of these men that went around and did healing. So is there anybody that needs prayer, first of all? Anybody need prayer before we go? Okay. I would like to grab my two kids from Sunday school Okay. You want to bring them up? Yeah. Yeah. I'll get a picture? Okay. Hey, do they want to get a picture of you guys too if you... You guys want to, let's fan out here while they go down. Come on, come on, you guys. Come on, come on. We're going to get a picture, yeah. Yeah, Barb, you want to get in a picture? <laughs> come on, Mom. Go stand with my wife. You can stand next to your mom. Okay, we good? That's good. Yep. All right. There's, there's Kate and Kelsey downstairs. Yeah. Hey, clap, yeah.
prayed with us uh, with Martin. Father, today as we as we got into your word, not just today, but last week and before times, God, we we noticed that you poured out your Holy Spirit on these men that were uneducated and untrained. You poured out your spirit on them. And Lord, we know that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so, Lord, we 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 need a sign, a wonder, and a miracle. And we need it for, for Martin. God, he, uh, he has a, a full plate uh, in his business, in his family, and his aging parents. And Lord, in Jesus' name, we pray that Martin would stay healthy and his body would be healed. So we're praying healing over him today, God. And I pray, I know, I know, God, that we have to cooperate with you. And I pray that even as Martin bombards heaven with prayer, I also pray that he would bombard his body with good health, healthy food, healthy living, sleeping right, and just helping his body to be able to function. So, but Lord, I know you're a miracle work in God, and you can work a miracle in his life, and that's what we're asking you today. Work a miracle in this young man's life and, and heal this body in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. and amen. Amen. You guys need prayer too? Yeah. Something specific or what? Um, just for Martin specifically to be prepared. Okay. So All right. we pray for healing and for Okay. Him. Thank you, Lord. Father God, God, we, we praise you today and thank you uh, for these uh, children. And God, we know that, that blended families, they can be difficult, God. Blended families can be difficult. And Lord, I want to pray for these two, knowing that they know that whatever this that this happening to them in their life had nothing to do with them, nothing at all. They were they were born into this family, and therefore whatever happened to this family happened to them. So it was not their fault. So I pray that you take that right off their plate. Them thinking that it was their fault, but Lord, that doesn't mean that they can't function and that everything can't go well. So that's what we're praying, Lord. Even though we're talking about a blended family here, we pray that all would go well and they wouldn't be working these two families against each other, but that these two families, especially these two young ones, would grow in you. And Lord, we are going to do everything we possibly can to encourage them and to pray for them so that your plans and your purposes could come to fruition in their lives. So we pray a blessing on these two, and we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. 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 All right. Praise God. Who, who, uh, who, who want anybody? To, what did you hear the Lord saying to you today through the word? Anybody? Come here. I'm not very good at taking risks. But when I heard Pastor Guy say, be bold and be confident, and during this uh, Daniel fast, I am going to be praying for myself to be bold and to be confident. I heard um, through your word today, wasting time. And last year, uh, Chris and I, we didn't do the Daniel fast, but we fasted off of social media and didn't return to it. I returned to it later with just one, and I'll, I'll be giving it up again for the Daniel fast and not wasting time. That's a big one. Something you said that stuck with me is you could know a lot about God, but that doesn't mean you have a relationship with God. So that really hit hard because you can know everything. You can read the Bible. You can know facts. But if you don't have that relationship with God, I don't want to say it's 
it's it's just not enough. So you need the relationship along with the, the knowledge. Condemnation thing. It's a thing to challenge us to have a better relationship. Even if you're, if you're, ma you know, you're married. I mean, you don't know anything about Dan. You only know him a couple of years. He doesn't know anything about you. He's learning. But how do we learn about or know of Jesus without getting really to know him? Yeah. Anybody else? All righty. Song. We could play the ending song, please. <laughs> 